do clinical trials fit in with the treatment approaches? So clinical trials are really how we've made all these advances in CLL over the last decade. It's, it's how we learn about new treatments. It's how we learn about how to optimize the treatments that we have. And so I, I think that sometimes patients have a misconception that clinical trials are a last resort. You know, the idea that you've kind of exhausted all the standard options and then you go to a clinical trial as, as your last hope. Uh, but I actually like to kind of turn that on its head and, and say that clinical trials are actually the, the first resort, the first best option for patients. And whenever patients can get access to a clinical trial at any stage of their disease, I would really encourage them to consider it. We have quite a few clinical trials now in the frontline setting, meaning as, as an initial treatment for CLL, including some that are in development and, and will open soon. And, and these are the studies that are going to really help us define what the optimal regimens are, what's the optimal sequence of these different novel agents. And, and in CLL, really, we're at a point where the, the research on the disease is, is so mature that when you're in a clinical trial, you're either going to be on one regimen that you know you're getting and you know it's going to be an effective regimen, or you might be in a comparative trial where you could be randomized to one of two or three different regimens. But you know that each one of those regimens is one that we think is a great regimen. We just don't know which, which one is optimal for individual patients. So this is not a situation where there's placebo-controlled trials where you don't know, what you, you know if you're going to get an active treatment or not. You know, CLL is an area where we, we design our clinical trials so that all patients are going to be benefiting from, mm-hmm. from cutting edge approaches. And so, you know, not all patients have access to trials and that's okay. Uh, again, we're fortunate that we have many good options that can be given locally. Uh, but I, I do encourage patients, you know, even if they're only able to travel to CL, a CLL specialist once to, to have an initial consultation, to, to think about doing that, to, to get a, a CLL specialist sort of on your team, so to speak. Uh, and, you know, that way they can identify clinical trial options that, that may be a good fit. And, uh, and even if not, they can advise on what the optimal treatment options are to receive locally with, with your own oncologist. How do patients find out about these clinical trials? Yeah, I mean, I, I do think sort of the, the best way is through a CLL specialist because, you know, certainly they would have a, a great pulse on the trials they have available at their own center. Uh, they should also have a sense for what trials are available maybe at, at other centers. Uh, some of that can also be, there's a great resource through the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society where they can help navigate patients towards specific trials that, that may be applicable to them. Uh, there's also a website called clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, It can be a a little challenging if you're not familiar with it to to navigate the site, but uh, it is actually pretty straightforward. You can put in the disease and, and, uh, you know, look at different options for trials and uh, based on different drugs, for example, it'll list the eligibility criteria uh, for the trial. Uh, And so, you know, that, that's often I find a way that patients can kind of begin to identify whether they may be a candidate. You can't tell from the website, whether you're definitely a candidate or not, you really need to partner with uh, an investigator who's on the trial to, to, to learn that, but it certainly can be a good starting point to figure out what's out there. Mm -hmm.